The Mini PC can be a cheap way of upgrading your home PC setup, and we reviewed a few on this channel. Justin from GMK Tech got in touch with us and asked us to review one of their Ryzen units. We foamed at the mouth. The Ryzen processor has been at the center of my workstation for years, but right now, mine is just too big and very power hungry. Can the Nutbox K2 deliver the beans? We'll find out in today's video. Welcome to Team Pandora. Subscribble, can I interest you in a back rub? So here's what arrived. It's a fairly plain box with six sides. I like six. Just got nut box, N nut, nuts. And at the bottom we have the address, email, and all other information. Let's unwrap and slide her open. Nice. The mini PC inside is secure, and the top of it is flush with the box, so it can't move about. There are a couple of stickers at the top, but this looks very premium. Nice. Let's see what else we get. Inside this card is a manual. As I'm in Japan, this is in English, Japanese, and Chinese. And it goes over all the details of this little box. If you no longer have a box, it's an Xbox. I am John Luke, space pimp on a blimp. We also get a power cable for our adapter and a cable for HDMI video. This will work up to 4K and is around one and a half meters in length. Inside the other box, we have a warranty card, a vase mount, this is for hooking your mini PC to the back of a monitor. We also get a power adapter. You connect the three-prong cable to this, and then that go into your power outlet. This gives out 6.32 amps at 19 volts, and uses a maximum of 120 watts. Let's get in for a closer look. The top of the case feels like graphite. On the sides it's metal, and underneath plastic. I have a girlfriend that is plastic. Look around the front, we have the power switch. And fantastic. A three and a half millimeter audio jack. USB Type-C, which supports power delivery and Thunderbolt. Two USB 3.2 ports, and a pinhole to reset the BIOS. On the side we have some cooling vents, and on the back we got some more ports. There's power, two HDMI 2 ports, which are both support 4K at 60Hz. There's two more USB 3.2 ports, and a connector for 2.5 gig wide LAN. More cooling vents at the bottom, and a Kensington. Kensington? On the other side, more cooling vents, and underneath, yet more holes for cooling, and this area here is so we can attach the vase mount. To do so, we take off these rubber feet, screw on the mount, two more screws for the back of the monitor, and slide it on. Hey presto! But it's maybe too snug. I don't think any air can get in from the bottom. It's about time for the size comparison. The Notebox K2 is slightly larger than the B-Link S12, and slightly smaller than the Chewy Lockbox X and exactly four times the size of the original art box. And it's the same size as the Super Famicom Classic. Here's a double A battery. And a Roy Bush tea bag. Before we turn it on, here's a quick look at the specs. The Ryzen 7735HS is at the forefront of this PC. We expect it to be very powerful. We have a decent amount of both memory and storage space, but a lot of the gaming performance will rely on the onboard graphics, which apparently is on par with the 1050 Ti. When we first turn on, we're greeted to the Windows 11 setup screen. You'll need to decide the language and region, and if your language isn't there, you can add it later once we're in Windows. If you don't want to get tracked, unclick all these, and be ready to go in no time. Of course, we do have a legit version of Windows 11 Pro installed, and to get activated, we need to simply connect to the internet. We had no problems connecting to either one of my Wi-Fi routers, once we're activated, we can update. On a fresh computer like this, I usually go to ninite.com to install some free software. We get things like antivirus, graphics packages, and even open source versions of Office. And in all these cases, this computer does not break a sweat. Same goes for browsing online and streaming videos. 4K 60fps videos run smoothly without frame drops. It also has AV1 decoding, which should help a bit while streaming video. We can also watch some Pretty Boys on Netflix. And even Pat Sharp. Pat Sharp is such a stud. The main reason why I bought my first Ryzen processor was to help with music production, and this mini PC too will be able to handle a lot of plugins with no issue. And I'm not really an expert in Blender, but this demo is running at 24 FPS. More than likely, we're limited here by the graphics processor. Let's have a look at some benchmarks. Crystal dismount first, and it shows us that our NVMe won't break any records, but it's running at a good speed. Geekbench now, single score sits near a 5800X 3D, and multicore is just above the 3900X. Here are the Cinebench scores, and a few from Blender, and 3D Mark. 
These numbers probably mean nothing to you, but the scores from Userbench might. According to this, we have a UFO. It's an extremely powerful PC, and its only real weakness is its graphics card. If you run into any issues while gaming, this will be the bottleneck. Street Fighter 6 struggles with 1080p with normal graphics options, but goes full speed when settings are set to low. And if you're wondering about Final Fantasy XV, here you go. Let's load up some games. First gonna start on the Epic Store, here's Rocket League 1080p high settings. Valorant on 1080p high settings, working fine. But in Ghostbusters Unleash, we start to see some slowdown. Here we got 1080p, low settings, but if you want full speed, we need to bump it down to 720p. And the same can be said for Fortnite. Moving on to the Steam platform, indie games are no issue. We can pretend to be a dog, a cup, or even bread. It's CSGO. King of Fighters, 15. Why choose Terry when you could have chosen a nice set of beautifully shaped bongos? Here's Tekken 7. There are some slight dips, but we are running 1080p at high settings. These will do. I could play with those all night. And Forza Horizon 5, 1080p, medium settings. If you wanted to load up a Linux OS like Batacera, you can do so on this system. The only problem we had was with Bluetooth, so I'm guessing the driver hasn't been implemented yet. We can use a Mayflash or 8 bit do dongle and we can get around this. Let's emulate some machines. First up, Jim Power, Commodore Amiga. Full speed. Tekken Tag Tournament on main. Daytona USA 2. Out on 2006 on the PSP. God of War 2 on the PlayStation 2. And we can go all in for the PlayStation 3. Yeah. Or perhaps some Wii U. The point is, this mini PC really does deliver when it comes to emulation. Let's have a listen. The Nutbox K2 sounds to me a lot like a Steam Deck. Not silent and not really too loud. As for how much it pulls from the wall, 15 watts idle, and 50 watts under load. And let's compare that to my main PC. Around 160 watts at idle, and 180 watts while under load. A huge difference. Let's have a look inside. We have two sticks of DDR5, crucial. On the right here we have a Lexar NM610 Pro, and this is a PCIe Gen 3x4 stick. The board does support PCIe Gen 4, so we could upgrade if we ever feel the need to. Underneath we have the MediaTek MT7921, which is the chip responsible for Wi-Fi 6. To get it to the bottom, we need to remove the four rubber feet and take out four screws. Inside here we have the main CPU, as well as the heating and fan. If you wanted to, you could remove this and apply your own thermal paste, but I'm going to leave mine as it is. I think it's about time for the pros and the cons. This mini PC is unbelievably powerful. With its high quality parts, premium looks, and a reasonable price, this is one to have on the radar. But that doesn't apply to everyone. If you're looking to play AAA games or work in the 3D graphics industry, the GPU is its biggest limitation, and more space could be given for the air ducts at the bottom, especially when added to the mount. At the end of the day, this PC is truly remarkable. I know the GPU may be lacking a little, but if my main PC ever breaks, I'm confident that this one will make a great backup for video editing and Counter-Strike. To finish up, here's a big thank you to all those on our Patreon. You guys are the best, and we're sincerely grateful for all of your support. If you want to help support the channel, please jump on. We make video reviews, guides, and fix cheap pocket boxes and the A500 Mini. I'm still waiting for Pandory 500. 
This has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandory, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra! If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to like, subscribe, and bell. We have plenty of other videos, so why not check out another? I and John Luke engage my stick.